Hello friends. <coughs> now this is the 25th lecture on the history of the English language. Now we are dealing, you remember, with Latin influence on English. Foreign influences, that is the section, but we have already done Celtic influence. Latin influence, we have got three periods we have already seen, and that is first is zero period or continental borrowings. Second is uh, Latin to Celtic transmission or first period, and now you have got the, the second period or the, what we call the Christianizing of Britain. Now, when you can see, the Christianizing of Britain, we can read it as a short story. What happened is one day, some boys were walking in the, in the market, in the markets. They were going around in the market, and they looked like angels. They had white hair, face very innocent. So a man, uh, some, for some reason, came to the market and they, he saw them. And he said, he inquired, oh, from where are these people, these boys? They look very innocent. They look like uh, they, 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 are very, they are very handsome and so on, and very innocent also. Then another person who was standing, by, uh, standing nearby said that, uh, but they are from Angles, Anglia. Oh, Anglia. Then immediately the man said, Oh, they are angels. Angels. So Anglia, oh, they are, from, they are angels. He said, Then uh, from which province are they? He doesn't know that. Then the other man answered, he, They are from the, the Erie. The Erie. Oh, they are from the Erie. Oh, immediately he understood it like this. De ira. De ira means uh, ira means wrath, wrath, anger. De means God. The God, the anger of God. Oh, they are from that place. So there is anger of God because they have not become uh, Christians. That may be the reason. They are pagans. I said, what is the name of their king? I said, Yella. Yella. I said, Oh, immediately the person understood as a Alleluia. Oh, Alleluia. That's Alleluia. Ella is a, uh, Alleluia. Oh, that's great. Uh, this means praise of God. Then he thought that these people should be made Christians, these children. Not only these children, but the people there, Anglia or Angles, whatever it is, they should, they should also be made Christians. And this man who inquired about these boys later became Pope Gregory the Great. Pope Gregory, Gregory the Great. So when he, he had kept this in his mind, there are in far away place, some, some place there is, there is, that is called Anglia, and there are angels there, and uh, there are, they, all those people are, uh, they are being, they live in darkness. That is the wrath of God. So I should save them. It's my duty being a Pope. And then he was searching, there should be some very good person. I should send some very good person, select a very nice person. And then he came across a, a monk, a very innocent, observing all the rules, very kind and very generous and magnanimous, all the good qualities of a human being. His name was Augustine. Augustine. Augustine, not Augustine, that great theologian, Saint Augustine of Hippo, not that. This is Augustine of England. And he, said, he called Augustine and said, Augustine later became, uh, he was a monk, he became a saint. So then he said, uh, he called Augustine and said, Augustine, I'm going to, I enlist you with the mission. You should go to, a, there's a faraway place called Anglia, where angels are living, people like angels, people, they look like angels. So you go and convert them. You go and preach the word of God to them. So he said, I am ready, I am willing. And he took with him 40 monks. So from here, what happens? So far, it is an anecdote. It may not be historical event, but something like that might have happened. So what happened is in the year 597, 597, Augustine, who later became Saint Augustine, plus 40 monks, 
a party that is 41. We say about uh, Alibaba and 40, you know, like that. <laughs> that's, sorry, please don't misunderstand me. I'm just uh, comparing that, that's all. Yeah, you know the story, you know, Alibaba and 40 thieves. Not, not that way, and only the difference, only the comparison and similarity is Alibaba, instead of that, you can have St. Augustine and 40 monks, not thieves. Understand that? Only the number, similarity is only the number. Please don't misunderstand me. I consider it as an, an anecdote. Okay. So, Saint August, August, Saint Augustine, who became a saint. So, Augustine and 40 monks landed in a place, uh, in a place in the kingdom of Kent. Because in kingdom of Kent, there was a small Christian community. Understand that? And because the king's wife, uh, Queen Bertha, that is her name, Queen Bertha. Bertha. She was a Christian. See that? She was a Christian. And there was a small chapel also. At that time, it was known as, the place was known as Kent Vara Bilk. Ken Barabrik. That is today he called Canterbury. Canterbury, Canterbury. So that Salisbury, Canterbury. So that's also influence of Celtic. Ah, well, sorry, side stepping was not good for side comments. Some days it can confuse you. I did not say about Celtic. No. Okay. Already we are done. So uh, he landed in a place called See, that is uh, what he called uh, Kendavara Bird, that is Princess Bertha there. She was a Christian. So he, three months, uh, he worked there, he you know, settled down there, this small place. Okay, the queen gave a small place for them, made a chapel, constructed a chapel, and he went around and so on. Three months time, uh, the king of Kent, Ethelbert, that is his name, Ethelbert, A-E-T-H, became Christian. See that? Okay. Three months later. And then within seven years, that is, after the landing of the 597, within seven years, the whole of Kent, the, the, his subjects, that is Ethelbert's subjects, they, they accepted Christianity. So that is step one. And by that time, Augustine died, he was canonized, and he became a saint. So this is the Augustine chapter of Christianizing of Britain. Then he just easy for him for one thing. Already the princess there was a Christian, and then her husband became Christian. King and queen Christian, that means the subject also became Christian and so on. Now, they had a tough job. It was not that easy. Because there is the question was of a change of attitude, darshan or philosophy. Because Christianity preaches humility, meekness, charity, because it says you know, forgiveness, and then uh, you suppose somebody uh, some tolerance. So the, the teaching of Christianity, if somebody beats you on the right cheek, you should show the left cheek also. See, that is the, the if you have got the two garments, you should give one to the person who has no garment. And things like that. This is what, this is the teaching of Christianity. Now, what happened here is that Teutonic uh, philosophy was not like that. They were, uh, they were firm believers in physical courage, see. And then, uh, robbery, plundering, uh, and uh, activities like this, you know, connected to this. So it was a tough time for Augustine and 40 monks to do this change of mind. Somehow they managed to get it done. Then what happened is that in, 630, in 6, 635, so first date is 597, Augustine, the Augustine era, then you have got a 635, you have got a brother Aiden, the brother Aiden and some of his uh, assistants came to England again with this to do follow up work and uh, they were in the kingdom of Northumbria and 
not them will also became Christian. Look at that. Because probably these people who uh, gave too much importance to physical career, they thought that was spiritual life is also better. That way they accepted the spiritual, the philosophy of Christianity. And within 100 years, that is 96, 9, 50, 5972, EM says 697, 100 years time, the entire, all of England accepted Christianity. Understand that? And there were very key positions held by great scholars, that's the thing. Great scholars. Like we have already seen Venerable B. Then he saw there is uh, the Theodore of Tarsus. Theodore of Tarsus, Theodore of Tarsus, uh, he was appointed bishop. He was appointed bishop of Canterbury. Then he was accompanied by Hardian, a great classical scholar. Greatly. He knew both Latin and Greek, plus he also knew secular knowledge also. So like a uh, branches of secular knowledge like astronomy, poetry, and the, so he was uh, arithmetic and so on. Astronomy, poetry, arithmetic. So, and they and then there was another bishop from the Britain, Benedict, Bishop Benedict, and another great uh, classical scholar, Orham. Orham. So these are the people who played key roles in the Christianizing, not, not just Christianizing, but the development, the physical and intellectual and spiritual development of the English people. So they built monasteries, famous monastery, Jaro, that is Bede's monastery, monastery at Jaro, Wehrmouth, so these are very famous monasteries. These monasteries and monks, you know, they were very learned people, started schools. Then uh, as if, uh, if I say, like the centers of learning, established libraries. So they had contact with Rome, you know. So these people would go to Rome and bring a uh, uh, shipload of books on, on uh, foundations or, or to lay uh, fundamental knowledge, not foundation, fundamental knowledge like uh, philosophy, literature, then linguistic study of language, poetry, then uh, you have got uh, astronomy, such kind of things, and theology also. So, they started schools, centers of learning around, and these monks, they knew better ways of cultivation, agriculture, so they went around, met people and taught all these things and there was great prosperity. So in other words, church as an agent of Roman civilization worked wonders in England. That's the thing. Monastic life, monastic, classical and vernacular literature received such a booster dose. Both classical and vernacular literature. Understand, that's what it is. For 500 years, so that is up to 1150, that is Old English period, end of Old English period. So throughout Old English period, and within 500 years time, England practically became Christianized. You should understand that Christianized just doesn't mean just that word, but with that came all the uh, Roman civilization, all the best that is in Roman civilization in your agriculture, intellectual life, literature, classical languages, classical literature, schools, the centers of higher learning, rich libraries and so on. The two libraries are Wehrmouth, sorry, that is about this uh, a monastic life, the Wehrmouth and Jairo. So Jairo and uh, the spiritual grandchild of Venerable Bede, Alpsin, that's another person responsible for this. So these are the different uh, people responsible for this. Like Theodore of Tarsus, Archbishop, Hardian, his, uh, whom 
accompanied this who accompanied him a classical scholar benedict bishop he established two monasteries and alhel that is a great classical scholar and alzi that is his spiritual grand grandson of venerable bede so so all learned people they are good people they are meek and humble they practiced what they preached so they were very influential among the people that's right when you when you preach one thing and practice that same thing people have great respect for you that is so the same that if you say something as you do in a different way then suppose somebody tells you you should lead a humble simple life and the person who say you should lead humble simple life he leads a very luxurious life then what will happen nobody will believe you there is no so that's why the mahatma gandhi you know, why do you call him mahatma because he he practiced what he preached so sir, you know the story and so on. so i don't want to enter into that so the wonderful work done by this christian missionaries in england you cannot forget that and they cannot forget that. we we also you see christianizing of christian influence in in indian education everybody accepts that everybody nobody is against this see but on the like this i don't want to enter into all those things but this is the point you can see england the pagan england became christian along with that the pagan england the english people they also became civilized that is the roman the path of roman civilization was open and as you can say the flood gates of roman civilization the the advance the merits of the roman civilization right the good things that we find in roman civilization slowly gradually had great influence exerted gradually though significant influence on the life and culture intellectual life and spiritual life of the english people nobody can deny that understand that so what happened is england in the 8th century held the intellectual leadership of europe understand it's not a small thing is a big thing thing of 8th century in the 8th century england became the intellectual leader of europe so that is because of christianity this is the story of christianizing of england we don't stop here But for the time being i will take a break because the next stage is all what is what we got technical things see like different type different kinds of words belonging to different kinds of words different kinds of words belonging to different branches of knowledge etc importing of words import this is now we import we don't do it now when somebody then you used to import you know, foreign things like that uh, now uh, english word borrowed large number of words belonging to different areas of life those things technical things we will do the tomorrow otherwise you will uh, uh, myself and yourself will uh, uh, will get uh, maybe i say a bit confused so so we will see i hope that this you will now you should never forget this no this and uh, it has got another a second part the church after establishing and after becoming prosperous luxury then sloth and envy and all seven that reasons got into the church and the affairs of the church and then what happened is that for a, for a very long period for a, for a short period of, not a very long period of, short period learning suffered because they are the leaders and as i told the corruption got in that's what you find joseph kind of details all the characters you remember that is the monk then the the friar and so on description monastic satyr it comes from monastic satyr of course he deals with in a uh, chaucer deals deals with this kind of thing in a different way isn't it yeah, they had the best horses they used to go to rome and bring bones of pigs and sell uh, those bones as relics of saints so much of corruption now that's those things happen in the middle ages you know? that is so joseph alludes that also and also all those 
my dear school, uh, not monastics are there. They allude or they refer to such kind of malpractices and corruption in the church. So as a result of that, what happened is that uh, the church, uh, the learning also suffered. But uh, when there is, if there is a valley, there is a hill. So if there is a charge, there is a discharge, like that. So there is some man, some people came together and they thought that it is very bad. So they uh, initiated reforms. That's known as Benedictine reform. So as, as a result of Benedictine reform, more words entered English, Latin words. And that is uh, pertaining to say learning and academic life, theology and so on, medicine, so science. So this is briefly the story of Christianizing of Arbutan and also the the uh, the ups and downs again. For some time there was some uh, the learning suffered, but of course it came back uh, in the in the this is original position or the pristine glory was uh, attained again by Benedictine Benedictine reforms and as a result many were sent. So our point here is that this is the background. So the background has already been set. Now what we have to find out is what are the different kinds of words that enter into English. There are thousands of them. We are not going to do all the thousands of them, but we will have samples you now from this branch we have this that Abbot, angels, then you have all kinds of words you will find belonging to religion, religious life, spiritual life, science, arithmetic, poetry, literature, classical language, medicine, uh, agriculture and miscellaneous words and so on that you will see and in the next class till then bye have a nice day hope you have enjoyed this uh, story of Krishna Singapore and its relevance as well as English and the uh, civilization of England is concerned as I told you already I just reached the peak 8th century England was the intellectual leader of England bye have a nice day enjoy your life